All right, we are live. Showtime with Jordan Van Haslow and friends on Hot 702.5 FM broadcasting out of Las Vegas, also uh, streaming on Mix LR. And uh, I think that we're live on the Facebook Live as well. And someone's hooking up a watch party for me. I don't quite know what that is because I'm such a loser when it comes to the, is it, is it like all going on or did I need to open up a thing? It's so horrible. I'm so bad with this. Um, oh, there we go. Is that live? Is it working? Awesome. We're on. Yay. Well, welcome. Welcome to the show. We have a lot to talk about. Today is all going to be about my favorite award show in the world. The Oscars and other hot topics, and I have one of my favorite people in the world joining me today. Dun da da da. HRH, Princess Deandra. Princess, how are you, darling? Oh, wonderful. I'm so excited as well. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, my and goodness. Of course. I'm ready to chat. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can I tell you, you're one of my favorite people in the world. And it's so funny because, you know, I lived in New York full time for a really, really long time. And I think about the fact that we have a lot of friends in common. But it's so weird mm -hmm. that you and I actually never met until I was living until in Los LA. Angeles and you came yeah. out to Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, I, I say that a lot because like New York is like a global village. Yeah, like, there are like three, four queens that like I can't stand, <laughs> and it's funny how we are in the same circles. Uh -huh. We probably work similar gigs, and I never see those bitches. Like I see them every five years, every seven years, and I'm happy. <laughs> I really don't really hate them. But I didn't get along with them a long time ago. And I just kind of hold a grudge. <laughs> like, don't be nice to me now. You were nice in those 90s. And you can just go over there. Totally. But I think it's funny how you can navigate through life and you just never see certain people ever. Never. And, um, you, we, pro we probably could be like a block away from each other or like a bar away from each other, but it's like... It's fortuitous that we never speak. Well, it's thing. totally. And you know, it's so funny. So I went to this arts high school in Chicago and I have a friend. His name is Lindsey Jones. And he actually moved to New York long before I moved to New York because he went to college in New York. And I was like off, you know, doing a tour. And I always lived, I think he, because he went to MSM, Manhattan School of Music, and he always lived in the Upper West Side. And once I moved to New York and I got married, I lived on the Upper East Side and we never saw each other. And then when I got the job with Sony and moved to L.A. and I posted on, you know, you know, goodbye, New York. He was like, oh, my God, I can't believe we've lived in New York for all these years and we never saw each other. And now he lives in L.A. and I think he lives in Hollywood, not too far from where I lived. And now I'm in Vegas wow. and I still haven't like I haven't seen this kid since I think I graduated high school, <laughs> yet we've always wow. lived, like, literally, like, you know, a, a half a mile away from each other. It's just it's just the way that it is. It's just the way, I guess, it's just the, the way, way that it is. It is. It's a, although it's so weird with New York now, because I feel like everyone is moving to L.A. Like, every time I open up my Facebook, there's, like, someone else who's, oh, I'm in L.A. now. Oh, I'm moving. It's like, you, you're, you like, the only person, like, you're the one who's watching the island. Well, unless they give me that sitcom and three-year deal, I ain't going up there. <laughs> <laughs> So, it, doesn't, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> God bless you, LA. But that doesn't work for me. So I want to. So before we get into like the nitty gritty, I want to introduce you to the audience for those who don't know HRH Princess Deandre. She is you're you're like oh I think of you as old school New York. You're a drag queen in New York, and you've been around since like. The, with the club kid day is that horrible to talk about the club kids i know people have like mm -hmm. people i've I know, never one of them but i, I kind but of those... navigated in and out of that scene yeah i was never with an official club kid but i was in new york in the i don't know that would be the later 80s after five um we were kind of the first group of drag queens that made drag respectable 
like I remember before I became a drag queen, it was like, if she's a drag queen, oof. And it would be the mumbles. And then once I got to know drag queens, I'm like, oh, that's so horrible. What's the shade about? But then when I, we, we, I became a drag queen, it was Connie Girl and Glamour Moore and Shannon and a few others. Yeah. And then we just became these, like, we ruled New York City. And it was just a half of Lady Bunny came around around that time. And it was just us, like, ruling the city <laughs> for quite a while. And so that RuPaul reared her head and became famous. And it was like somebody poured water on gremlins. <laughs> and there they were. Had to them bitches everywhere. And when you look, know, it was another horrible drag queen. So, but we just were like the corners. They were like literally like 10 to 12 of us that were like working in the scene throughout the city. Until, you know, that supermodel came out. Well, so, so, so can we talk about that? Because, okay, I've never met Ru. I've never met RuPaul, and I always thought, because again, I've never like I've never been a drag queen, and I've really never been like a part of that circle, like that world. You know what I mean? Like I never like hung out, mm-hmm. like I never hung out at uh, Lucky Chang's or all of that. So I've always been kind of it's always been like on the periphery for me. But I remember in like the early '90s when RuPaul kind of became RuPaul because I was young then, but I remember like supermodel love the way and like all of a sudden yeah like, yeah yeah I was young then too <laughs> probably older than you but still young gone <laughs> but but I remember when like he became it and like and then he had like his VH1 show and then he like disappeared mm-hmm. and now he's like created this like cottage industry and. Like, what is, like, what is, because I've talked to certain people and there's people who think it's, like, wonderful because he's, like, made drag mainstream, but then there's other people who are, like, oh, my God, no one liked that bitch back then, and now, eh. Like, what do you, what do you, what 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 do you, what is your take? I don't have anything, I don't have anything against RuPaul. Like, we were very, very good friends, like, but then I haven't spoken to her in 20-some-odd years, but... I had a friendship with her. She's been to my home. I let her copy all of my Diana Ross tapes because she also has this infatuation with Diana Ross. <laughs> and you know, even more than me, because you know, I'll call <laughs> Is that the possible? behavior. She ain't Jesus Christ to me. She's a woman <laughs> with many, many flaws <laughs> in, in the 20s. <laughs> I was never one of those glassy eyed fans. I saw the shade. I was on the receiving end of the show. What do you call it? So you, always, call, you always post about her. But oh, you don't I call, call it Frosty. Frosty. She, she's not warm and fuzzy. She's <laughs> very cold and bitchy. I always say when you see her, because like she does like the, um, and I think she's so fucking amazing, but like you see her and like she has like, you know, in Connecticut and she has like her Christmas photos with all of her children. And I remember like when Oprah was leaving and she came on Oprah and like the kids did the thing. I always picture her like beating the kids like, okay, you better do this or I'm going to kill you. And I think no, she's amazing. I would imagine that the, the, I imagine that the children don't see, or they say must have seen it. But I mean, I don't think that's for us to be deserved for the children. You I don't? think the children get the warm, incredible side of her because they've all turned out so incredible, like yeah. without scandal, without show. So that's a testament. That's a very valid point. Like none of them have drug problems. None of them have. Well, I heard. Oh. But, but, but <laughs> public, publicly, <laughs> like you didn't hear, oh, Diana Ross's kid was like picked up on a DUI. Well, I one of them had going. a little problem, <laughs> but it was sick. It was only your sex. I've been never that high with the child, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm not spreading those out. So what happens? What happens in the The kids got a little wayward, and they <laughs> they, they honed them in. What happens in Greenwich? One of them. Stays in Greenwich. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> or LA or New York or, or wherever they were scoring. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so so since we're on this subject, for those of our audience that don't know, I want to talk a little bit about Poke Gate. So those of you in our audience, you you may not know HRH Princess DeAndre. You're not from New York. You're not. You haven't been around the scene for a very long time. But 
if you go back about a year, we're almost at the one year anniversary. It's actually. almost a year it's ago. Almost a oh year my ago. God. And it's everyone was talking about it. Like uh, it was the Wendy was a hot topic. E.T. was talking about it. Everyone was talking about it. There was this crazy fan who decided was at like uh, uh it, it was for chic right it was it was like chic was performing it was like the, the opening of um that hotel i don't even remember the name of it now but it was a it reopening was the for hotel, hotel and chic was performing and then they said hey we have a special guest and all of a sudden you hear i'm coming out and some crazy individual decided to Poke Diana Ross on her side. Who is that individual? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't do it out of malice. Like, it was a situation. I stumbled into a green room. There was tons of champagne. Okay. And they were doing photo shoots and whatever. Because, you know, they hired all of the supermodels. And I kind of knew what if she were there. And I don't really know the real young ones. They're not the supermodels from my day. Uh-huh. But then one of those one of those Hadid sisters was perched, and that other one I don't know her name, and I kind of looked at them like, "Oh, it's you." I don't really care. Uh-huh. But it was a table full of champagne. Okay. So I kept going to the green room to get champagne, and I just said, "I'm just gonna take a bottle. So I have to come back." They said nothing. So I went back to get a second bottle. They said nothing. The third bottle I was sharing, but I guess it really got me. So by the time I ran into a friend. And by the time, you know, I heard those chords of I'm coming out, I barreled to the front of the stage like a crazed lunatic. <laughs> and then there she was. And I swear I reverted back to my five-year-old self. <laughs> oh, my God, it's her. And I always loved her. Like, always, always, always. I can't remember not loving her. Yeah. Not. My mother even tells a story of how I was crawling on the floor, and she came on the TV, and I stopped. <laughs> and then I cry like for hours and hours after she left. So it, you know, it's an age. It's there. So you're so coming out story it was and clearly no surprise she, to anybody. She was in a zone. She was looking. I'm screaming. I just wanted her to touch my hand. Something. She said, no, it's just seen, not today. And she's just looking forward in her zone. And I was like, hey, Frosty, Frosty. So... <laughs> And she gagged, like she came like out of her thing for a second, and she kind of mock swung at me to hit me. I wish she really would have hit me because it would have slapped me out of my my kind of face there. Mm-hmm. And then I just kind of stepped back, like, oh my god, I poked her. I kind of like that was crossing a line. I felt that. And then ten nine eight security said, "Excuse me, sir, Could you please come with us." Just like that, oh, no. polite. Big, beautiful, two big, beautiful black guys. Oh, that could have been like a gangbang porno. It was beautiful. <laughs> but, you know. And I was like, I, I, I'll step back. I, I won't touch her again. And they said, no, it's okay. Just come with us. And they were just talking to me like I was their friend. They didn't even take my champagne out of my hand. I finished it, mind you. And by they just talking with me. And before I knew it, I was on the street. <laughs> And when I thought they just threw my ass off. It was the smoothest, most polite <laughs> injection I've ever had. That's how you know. I've had a few. That's, but see, that's... <laughs> That's how it should be. Because, you know, like, you see, like, the rappers and they have, like, their big, burly, like, thugs who are, like, beating down folks. But, like, divas and stars. I will never forget I, the one... You know, and- Go for My it. sister said the same thing, like, you better be lucky they had that caliber of security, because if it would have been those thugs out jail Negroes, I will say Negroes, they would have beat the shit out of you. But that's, <laughs> that's how you know, like, a true question. diva. I remember once upon a time in New York, I was leaving um, Lord & Taylor. God, I miss Lord & Taylor. It was my favorite department store, but that's another show. But I was leaving, and, like... I was talking to my friend and pushing the door open. I was really slow in it because I was like in my conversation. All of a sudden, a person says, excuse me, sir. And he just gently touched my shoulder and I moved over and I was like, OK, thank you. And then he walks out and then the another person walks out. And all of a sudden I realized Bill Clinton was behind me. And I was like, oh, my God, that was like the coolest 
security in the world because he probably knows how to kill me with just like one finger on like a person, like a, a, a part of my neck. And I was like, that's so much like more intimidating and fabulous than some big fat no neck bruiser. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's how you know she's a diva. I love that. But, well, I don't know if you know, that was her security or the hotel security, but yeah, they, 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 they get a commendation from me. That was commendable. I think I that like, that's wow. wonderful, especially because you've been doing her forever, right? Like, she's like your forever. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, that's how I probably got my start. And, I got to travel. I've I've been to five continents and Japan fifteen times. And oh, one wow. time I was hired to to promote her concerts in Japan, which she didn't want to promote. And I guess they weren't selling well. So I was running around, going to malls and doing stuff, and it was fun. So and now so we, have to, we have to figure and out how to create like a sit down between the two of you. She don't want to meet me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, everything uh, think, is possible. I think I, I think I crossed the line too much with her. Deandra, like, everything is possible. There. You just have to create the right value proposition. If you create okay. the right value I'll, proposition, I'll be, we can you make know, it happen. I'm optimistic, but in my heart, I'm like that ship has sailed. And I even have a vow, like I see her at her best. So I don't have to see her be old and thrown in the dance. <laughs> You know, wearing those old dresses and just standing there posing, singing or not. Not reading her because I think it's wonderful that she could still get up and do that at her age. But it's like, eh, I've seen it. Well, this you know, I'm, I'm going to work on it. Now that I'm here in L.A. Right. doing my musical residency, she keeps coming back to the wind. I'm gonna work on it. You have you say this. I'm gonna work uh -oh. on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it. And I'm gonna work on trying to make it happen here at Hot Seven Hundred Two Point Five FM. I'm gonna make it. I'm I'm gonna work on it. I promise you, I'm gonna All work right. on it really, really. You hard. do that. So when I when I call you and say you have to be in Vegas on Tuesday, you're gonna be like, what? I'm like, listen, you gotta be here. <laughs> So, so DeAndre, did you watch the Oscars? Of course I watched the Oscars. I was any queen worth their salt is going to watch the Oscars. And, you know, i got to say this. You know they're not as exciting as they usually are to me. Well, it's like, you know, when you, as you get older, I don't go to the movies anymore. I don't see well, those damn movies. I think it's a couple of things. I think it's about not going to the movies, but I also think that we are now at this place, because I was thinking this yesterday where it's like, and we talked about this last week about what does it mean to be famous anymore? Because like stupid children, stupid children, I shouldn't say that, but stupid children, they're not listening to this. They like <laughs> once upon a time, there were three television networks and there were, you know, your AMC movie mm -hmm. theater. And if you, you know, if there was a movie out, everyone knew about that movie and everyone, either, even if they didn't go see the movie, they knew about it and they knew who was in it. But now there's like the YouTube and the this and the that and the that. And it's so like half of the people like, did you notice last night there were like three or four times where like the they'd come back from commercial and some random young person like there was a guy from, I think, Hamilton or something. And they like would introduce themselves. It was like, hi, I'm Jordan Von Haslow. So movies today, and I was just like, oh my God, this is the Oscars. Everyone, we should all know who everyone is. And I think that that's the biggest thing, that we're in such a, a fractured society now that like it doesn't mean the same thing, and it really hurts my soul. But I have to say, I had it all with the intention of like doing what I needed to do around here and just having it on the background noise. But Janelle Monet's opening was so good. Oh yeah, I was like, yes. "Wow!" Yeah. Oh my yes. God! Wow! <laughs> and then I mean, there were moments, and then and I was watching that pre-show, and Billy Porter and Cameron Hall and that one, and I'm just like, "No, what? No!" So I have some serious what? thoughts about Billy Porter. I really do. You know, I would preface this with Billy Porter. Billy Porter is really talented. I've known of Billy Porter for like that 20 years because 
I'm a, kind of a theater lover, and I've seen him around and things, and and it's literally 20 years ago, he was in Dream Girls in concert. Mm-hmm. I remember that. I'm, I'm a, With Brand- I'm, a rabid, I'm a rabid Dream Girls person. I've seen it a thousand times. I knew Cheryl Lee Ralph. I could do the show front with him backwards. <laughs> that was the one with, um, with, do you know Brandy Siobhan Massey? Do you know Brandy Massey? She was in um, mm-hmm. Wicked Forever, Black Girl. She was in Wicked Forever. She was, I think she initially was Adina Menzel's understudy, and then she just did it forever. But I think she was in that cast with him. Never, the, never. Well, in Dream Girls, in concert, he was James Thunder Early. Yeah. I never made the connection, but, you know, I listen to Dream Girls in concert every so often, a lot. And I put it on, and also my commute to work. Oh, my kids sit in the hall. It's a lot like Billy Porter. And then I kind of look, I'm like, oh, my God, that was Billy Porter. God, I really love him now. And then when he was in this interview with the Tamlin Hall saying he was masculine enough to get jobs, I was like, well, you sure to help hold that off. And all the while that I'm knowing him, I never saw this queen inside of him. Like, you know, the flamboyance and, you know, this. He reminds me of early Lady Gaga. Like, he's really talented, as she is. But yeah. with her, I could not get past those hideous dootsies. Dootsies mean costumes or look. Totally. You know, that and and that's my issue. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't get past the dootsies. And the minute she, I remember the first time I saw her staying with Tony Bennett, and she was doing this full live impersonation. Oh, my God. Like, she had a lot of, like, a dolman sleeve dress, shorter hair, and she was sitting with Tony Bennett, and it was pure genius. I'm like, this bitch is talented. She really needs to put the dixies away and just be who she is. And that's my but thing with get, him. But I kind of get that they like they want you to look at them first, and maybe you get the side of his system. Maybe she's like he's having a midlife crisis. But um, well, I will say, you know, this is love because I don't, know, I don't, I see the people reading him, and I can't read him. You know, I hate ninety percent of the things that he wears. I'm sorry, I just do. But he was recently styled for British Vogue by my friend Michael Leandros, and I wrote to Michael and said, "You did this. Can you please be his personal stylist from this moment on?" And he kind of laughed, like it's not side of my hands. This is a one-off, perhaps. Maybe he'll come back. <laughs> I'm like, but no, he looks cleaning and edgy enough that you get the point that he's all in silver. You got to catch this. No, here's yeah. my here's my issue with with Billy Porter, and I've been a Billy Porter fan, I think, longer than you, because I've been following his career since he did Grease. And that was like the Grease. Oh. Remember the Grease, like with like when Rosie O'Donnell came in, and I think Debbie Gibson. Was I in totally a, do. Like, I, like the early nineties. I had no interest to see that. But he off. was. But I, I remember. So he was the teenager, you know, beauty school dropout, and they like turned it into this amazing gospel number for him, and he was ah, doing all that crap, and it was like, oh my uh-huh. god, this man is amazing. And I followed him, and then he did that movie. Um, what was it called? Broken Hearts Club. Remember the movie with um, the guy from yeah. Frasier? He did that, and like it was following him on Broadway. Like, and he like never like it never clicked for him because he he is he is a queen. Like, and so he like I could see why he he had challenges. I I could see why he might have had challenges, particularly through the '90s, getting work. And then I remember like. He there was a whole article about him. He did an interview with New York Times right after he got um, uh, what's it called with the kinky boots about how like he couldn't find work and he was like on the verge of or he might have been homeless and then he like got the job and that like kickstarted his career. So I've been rooting for him forever. And here's my thing about him: I think that he's like probably one of the most talented people who have ever. Come he's across the stage. Talented. Like, he's like, one of the most talented people in the, the world. Talent. And I, there was another article. I think he, it was after he did that first thing. I don't know which award show it was. That first time when he like was wearing like the black. I don't know if it was Dolce and Gabbana, but he was wearing like the black skirt with the tuxedo jacket and and this that, and the other. Now, and I he, was Christian Siriano, and he was 
Coffee is who I think did it better. Hector Extravaganza. He totally stole the look of Hector Extravaganza. Well, and we can talk about Christian and Serrano. The I have thoughts about that, too. But he, his, his, he had a, he, they asked him about it, and he talked about, so do you remember when, um, uh, Adina Menzel saying let it go on the Oscars a few years ago and um, mm-hmm. John Travolta totally like mispronounced her Adele name. Adele Disease. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh my God, I saw that and I realized, oh my God, this just totally took Broadway to a new level because it just introduced this woman to the entire world and it introduced Broadway to the entire world and he's like, Oh my God, I'm going to be on the red carpet. I can do that same thing. So he dressed the way he dressed. And now he keeps on doing it. And my issue with it is that I I really, I mean, I don't know him. I like, we like sort of like you, like we sort of run in similar circles, but I've never met him. But I don't feel like he dresses that way normally. I feel like it's just for the award shows and such. And my thing is. Well, he goes on talk shows now a little bit more flamboyant than before. I just. Just click. Like, I could do this. No, I think it's just. I think a good it's time her. doing it, like a person in a midlife crisis. Like a person with uh, a midlife crisis. I think here's my thing. He's very talented. He's one of the most talented people who've ever walked in this world. And my thing is, people who make spectacle of themselves usually make spectacles of themselves to hide the fact that they have no talent. And what I think is, and it, 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 why I, I, I think that he's going to f- ruin his legacy because he could go down as someone who is black and gay and I talented and hits way. all types of things. And now he's going to go down and I feel like his legacy is going to be like, he's going to be like the black Paul Lind. No one's going to remember the fact that he can sing or that he could act or that he did whatever. It's just going to be like, Oh, there was this like black gay guy who used to wear skirts to the, to the maybe to the you ride there. this out and then once you know him he'll calm down and get out of the system we hope and then you know he'll just shine without all that well that he needs to um, because he's so talented and i think that that's just again if you weren't talented i'd say you know go with god because you need to do something to get into the press but i think he's so i think he's so talented that i think that it clouds his like it it overshadows his talent and i think and we have enough people who are like famous for being famous and famous for just making spectacles. Well, back in the day, that same thing happened with Lavelle. Lavelle had that crazy look so that you could notice them. And then once they hit, and then they started making really serious music, they were ignored. But he's and he's it, hit. He's singing on the Oscars now. He's standing up and making like he's taking over the Tony Awards now. Like he's hit. So now it's time to, it's like, you know, I was thinking about this. I was having a conversation with my friend Dante about this. It's like um, RuPaul's the same way. So RuPaul's this fabulous drag queen and he's always like, blah. And then when you see RuPaul not in drag when he's on a... um, Nobody wants that. Sorry, but, he's, oh, but, he's, but he's always like in, <laughs> in like, you know, neon Saturday suits. Night Live so, was very, and it I, had its moment. But I think it that, had its moment. But I think that like, uh, like, a, but like, Night? wait, did I watch what? Saturday Night Live on Saturday with RuPaul. She no, I, did, I didn't I did watch it. That was pretty historical. How could you have missed that? I, I'll but, watch it anyway. on the, I watched that. Now I'm mad. You should have told me to watch it so we could talk about it. Damn you. I, you know what? I, I did not realize that I had heard she was on it and I rushed to watch it. I should have. I'm sorry. You should have. I, just assume, I assumed you would. I just figured every queen in the world would watch it. I don't I'm not into listen I'm not into the like I'm like the the drag race thing I'm not into I've never so I've never yeah, can I tell I. you but can I tell you like for example like do you know I actually I lived in New York forever and I have actually never been to Lucky Chang's Ever. Mm, it's okay. Ever. Like, I just, I never. There's, was, a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of other things to do in New York City. I, of, I understand. And I've just never been. And so, like, I've, I just was never, like, like the drag. Like, it's kind of like, okay, I'm a cabaret singer, right? And I sing in clubs and cabaret clubs and stuff. And just like this, people who just never, like, oh my God, let me go down to the Cafe Carlisle and listen to music. I just never got into the drag thing, except for. So, the only time I was ever immersed in the RuPaul's drag race was right before I got divorced. So, like, right. Right before, before we filed, but when things were getting awful, 
I was living in New York with my ex-husband. And I was like, I got to get out of here. And so I flew uh, to Chicago and I stayed in my friend's guest room for like half a summer. And he was obsessed. This is like 10 years ago. He was obsessed with RuPaul's Drag Race. And, you know, I'm living wow. in his, I'm living in his, you know, guest room. So, of course, like I'm the guest and like I, like my marriage is falling apart. So I have nowhere to go. So, of course, I have to like do whatever he wants to do. And he would not only just watch it, but he would like just put on, he recorded it. And like, so I would just watch. I saw so much of it. And now I don't remember where I was going with that story because there was a point to why I brought that up. God damn it. About not being into drag. That's why you didn't watch RuPaul on... Right, but but why did we even... Oh, I didn't watch... Yeah, so I never like... So I guess what I'm saying is like RuPaul's not on my... There's lots of queens who are like, oh my god, RuPaul, but it's like he's not on my he's not on my radar. Like, oh my god, RuPaul's on, I need yeah. to watch him. Oh, but no, but what I was saying is like, so when RuPaul's out of drag, he wears like orange suits and polka dot suits and all that, and it's Pink. like. You, and they look too small. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like, just, no. You should be, no. RuPaul should be like in the most, like when RuPaul is not in drag, he should be in the most tailored Tom Ford fuck you suit in the world. Mm. That's that, And I feel the same way about Billy Porter. Like you're a star now. You're on a hit TV show. Everyone knows who you are. So you should not be... Look at me. You should be so like you should look like a star, not a spectacle. Absolutely. That's that's how I feel about that. That's how I, I don't know. That, that was nice without ripping her a new one. Well, just, because that's some, it's, of these, some of the comments and I just go, I'm not going to read her because I. It's funny when when you hear it in an interview, and not only is you no know, he talented, he's pretty smart, and he. <laughs> says the most amazing things in an interview, like honest, like really honest, not the bullshit press release stuff. Totally. And, and like he's built an empire. He's built an empire. And I'm just like, yeah, but Jim, why do you have to look like such a spectacle then? And that that's that's all my thought. So who was your favorite of last night? Like of who of all the Oh uh, with hands down Miss Jane Fonda, honey. Isn't she rolled her eighty two she rolls her 82 year old ass out there <laughs> in a gray hat and a doofy she wore like six years ago. <laughs> I know that dress. How do I know that dress? Does someone else wear that dress? Does she wear that dress? And I'm, 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 I'm running around today and I see someone said she wore that dress to the Con Film Festival in 2014. <laughs> And I went, ooh, you still get a pass. You still get a pass. She's fabulous. That well, was that was the high, that was the highlight of the awards for me. I'm sorry, like she came out. And I, honestly, I love uh, the two, Chris Rock and Steve Martin. I like them I as well. The, I like the Saturday Night Live girl, but the Maya Rudolph, like her look, is kind of hideous. Oh, I we'll can I tell that. you that whole thing, the Maya Rudolph and um Kristen Wig, I felt Kristen like Wig. I felt like they were the poor man's Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Remember when like they used to oh. host the Golden Globes? Well, you know, it's all the same family, the same no, day. No, it was bad. And then like that singing thing they did, I felt like I was in like some cabaret room in Hell's Kitchen. Like sorry, that was not <laughs> Oscars worthy. And I like and I don't mean to be but it was not Oscars worthy. That was like silly stuff that you do in like a little bar. Like I didn't I really didn't like that. I really didn't like that. And I'm okay. actually upset. Well, we, we, we can disagree, but they, they, <laughs> I, was, I was living for it. I was. Because it to me, it was just like ho-hum. And then it was like the typical winners. But what I did love, the fact that Parasite did so well. So I'm going, well, Oscar isn't so white after all. Right. Because Asia people ain't white. No, I know those Koreans, ble- those Koreans bleach to the heaven. But still, <laughs> bleach, all, bleach all you want, girl. And the they do all of their business in. in the black neighborhoods. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, they, Ooh. Well. <laughs> oh, no, no, you play now. <laughs> but, um, 
<laughs> and they make great food, Korean barbecue. Oh shit. my god, I haven't had Korean, but now I want to go back to LA and go to Korean barbecue. I haven't had Korean barbecue. Oh my in god, yeah, I think I met you at the Korean barbecue <laughs> restaurant. Oh my god, that's right. Wait, because we, yeah, that's it right. was the birthday of the for him. I forget the name. We were in that restaurant. Yeah, well, in well, LA. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I um. So I'm glad that they won. I um so did you watch any of the movies this year? Because I didn't watch a lot of them. I saw Judy. I saw I Once told Upon you, a Time. I I I didn't. I um, embarrassingly, I think I saw maybe one, two tops, and I never could get through Judy because I kept being distracted. And now I'm gonna sit back and realize because I'm a huge Judy Garland fan. Oh my god! And I was. I was about 11 to 15, maybe. I read every biography. I've seen every movie, that TV series of hers in the early 60s. Then me to no, to no end. Wait, we have and, like a call-in or something. Hold on. I don't know how oh. to do this. I've never done this before, but it's from Los Angeles. Hello? Would you like to ask a question? Right? Hold on. Let's see. Hello? Hi. I just wanted to talk to you about Guinan on Star Trek coming up. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's Chris Garcia. Are you on the phone still, um, uh, 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 Deandra? I don't know how to work this. I don't know if I can do this it's multiple calls. I think I can only swap between the two. How are you, Chris Garcia? I'm fine, but did you like the, um, the, the Oscars last night or I no? I adored the Oscars last night, but hold on. I'm going to see if I can get you both on the phone at the same time. Hold on. Oh, my goodness. Deandra? Yes. All right. So let's talk about this. Well, no, I didn't. So, like, someone was calling in, and it turns out it's Chris Garcia of the Magic Castle in Los Angeles. But I don't know if I can get you both on the phone at the same time. So hold on. Uh, We're going to do this. We're going to do this. All right. Jesus. Hello. Chris Garcia. Apparently, there's no way to put you both on the phone at the same time. So I'm going to talk to you for a second, and then I'm going to go back to Deandra. What did you ask? So why are you giving so much tea to um, Miss Maya Rudolph and them? I mean, of course. Because it wasn't funny. I thought it was cute, but it wasn't it wasn't Oscar worthy. Like I said, it's like something that you like do on like a in like a cabaret room. I just said I didn't I think, think it was, it was like a nice throwback, though. Like, oh. I mean, at least. Mm, OK, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Well, I mean, I'm not going to complain. As you have already admitted, like, I mean, with the whole book and clubs, like, I mean, yeah, so they did that already, and that's their whole thing. But I think that they, specifically, were on point, and they were actually very funny. And it's actually the most funny that I've actually seen my word off in a very long time. Oh, see, it's now the shade comes out. Now the shade comes that. out. Yeah. But can't you like not agree? No, I, not agree? I I told you how I felt about it. I gave you exactly what I think about it, and you know whatever. But I miss you, my darling. Well, I can't wait to see you again. I miss you too. You have to come out to I Vegas. Know. When are you going to be back in Los Angeles? Uh, probably in a couple of weeks. I need to check my mail. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my god, All right, honey. Chrissy, All I right. love you. Let me go back to Deandra. I'll call you later. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Deandra? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's so funny. Chris, my friend, I don't know if you met Chris when you came out to Los Angeles. Chris, Chris, Chris is the, he, he, he works for the founder, the creator of the Magic Castle, and he just called in. But I don't know how to, you know, like this is only my second show, and I don't know how to work all of these like buttons. You should see what I'm looking at. It's like so scary. It's like, oh. <laughs> And I don't know how to, like, pull two people into the call together. So I had to keep going back and forth. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so you you spoke with him for a second because my niece, hi, Chanel, she just texted me. Oh, my God, I can hear you. Chanel. I'm glad you tuned in. Hi, Chanel. But yeah, so that was my. Th- those are my thoughts about that. I I agree with you that uh, uh, Jane Fonda was amazing. I remember she was on Bill Maher like last season, and he like in the middle of their interview, he like stopped and said, "Listen, I just gotta stop and tell you 
that you are the sexiest old lady I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> like whenever I see those, whenever I see those ones with the busted surgeries, like we do do, no. I'm like, call Jay Fonda, call Jay Fonda, girl, get that number, smooth up. You said like who? You are going. Madudu, I call her Madudu, Madonna. Oh, Madu. Oh, Madonna. I. Oh, God. <laughs> this is like a whole nother hour. We could do an hour on Madonna. Uh, it's understand. a whole nother three hours. Let's move away from that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> move away from that. Not on my first outing. Let's move away from that. Put that bitch in the back of the bus. The rose up. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! You know who I didn't like in terms of outfits? That kid, Timothy Chalamar. You know the one who was in that movie last year? Like, come call me by my name. The one who was like in the like the movie where he was like a kid who was like. No, honey, Billy Eilish. I don't care if that was Chanel. Oh, I. They oh, made yeah. you. I'm like, did you pick that out? Or did they say, here, wear this, be edgy. I'm like, no, bitch, you wear that. I wouldn't wear that to pick out the trash. Like, I, it's just amazing to me when you have such a huge platform and the eyes of the world are going to look at you, and yet you choose the most ludicrous, most hideous thing to wear ever. Like, you are going to let them have it. I don't tell Make you. this huge... It's a generation. It baffles thing. my mind. You get a team. They show up hours early. Put you in that, and you look in the mirror and go, "Yes, I'm gonna let them have it." I'm this telling you, it's, it's a generational thing. Like there's no respect for it anymore. No one gets it. Like the, the, this new generation, they don't get it. It's like a total generational. I just watched this. I don't know. Do you have the Hulu? Hulu. Hulu. I had it, and I didn't use it a lot. So, so there's I, this new I, documentary on Hulu, and I just watched it last night. It's called Jawline. And it's ooh. about these kids who are all Instagram uh, uh, influencers. And it's like there's one kid who's, like, trying to, like, really up his game and, like, really start making it as an inst- as an influencer. And then it's about the other characters, like this manager who manages all of these big influencers and just watching them. And it's like, oh, my goodness, it's, this is it's more than a generational divide. Like it, 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 people who are, you know, 27 and younger truly live in a different world. And everything yeah. that we knew and we grow up and we're fed about, like what it means to be a celebrity is a completely different thing than what they are looking for. And so like a Billie Eilish, 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 you see, I don't even know her name. Eilish, like it's what she I wants. I think it's Eilish. She doesn't, like it's a totally different world. Like when I grew up, right, like I went to theater school and all that crap. I grew up, you know, and you're supposed to move to New York, do theater, get on Broadway, move to LA, get on TV, do some movies, get an Oscar and become a star. And be a star in the process. Yes. And, but now it's like, okay, just be famous to be famous, whether or not you like sing, dance, act, juggle, whatever yep. you do, just be famous. I have famous two million t- followers. I'm famous. And that's all that it's about. But what was really interesting about this, it was really fascinating because, you know, like I've always looked at these people and it's like, you And suck. why do they call it Jawline? What is the, the I think it's because it's just like I think because I never actually explained it and I read a few reviews trying to find it. I think it's just because it's all these guys, these like boys, like and they all look the same and like they all have like really strong jaws and really high cheekbones. Uh. And, and like they all look the same and have the same little like half pompadour and like a fade on the side. It's really interesting. So but, it was only it was only boys in this documentary. It was only boys in this documentary. And what's really interesting and, uh, it sounds and it sounds like only white boys. Only white boys. Well what have you met how many black influencers have you met or Latino influencers have you met? When I think of them all, they're all white. Exactly. So <laughs> I <laughs> I, but what was really interesting is that what this documentary did, and, and the woman, her name was Liza, I can't remember what her last name was, but she did a really good job, and she actually won, um, uh, she won a prize at Sundance for the movie, 
uh, for like rising director or rising filmmaker or something. But what was really fab fascinating was for the first time, like I understood what this whole thing was about. And so it's like all these kids being famous, but then you they showed and interviewed the girls who loves love them because like they do tours and show up at theaters. And it's like when I wow. was a kid and like the new kids on the block would perform and the girls are like, Wah! but they don't do anything. Like they literally just stand up on stage and like spray silly string and like take pictures and take selfies with everyone. But all of the girls were like losers, you know, like they're all the like the girls who like have braces and are fat and are ugly and are like, oh, my God, I get bullied. And, oh, my God, I got cut myself. And what they've created with this whole uh, uh, social media thing is like a their own like uh, their own microcosm of high school, because in their own high school or junior high school, they're the losers. But, you know, and there's the cute popular guy who would never talk to them and probably kicks them and talks about him, makes fun of them. But they follow these social media stars and these social media stars basically talk directly to them and tell them that they're wonderful and that they're pretty and they'll like direct message them. And it's all about it's it, it really broke my heart. It really broke oh. my heart and made me realize, wow, kids today yeah suck. but i sure wish i could do that to, to, to all of those hoes right <laughs> you're great i'm selling this why don't you buy three of them exactly oh, well like the one kid he did like a meet and greet in the mall and the kids came but then but then you saw how like you know like in show business like you know you're in show business we're in show business we're all whores at the end of the day because he did a meet and greet and like 10 girls showed up and they're like just walking through the mall and then there was this like mechanical donkey and the girl goes, get on it and ride on it. And he was like, no, I don't think so. And she handed him a $5 bill and said, get on it. And he got on it and took the $5 bill. Oh. <laughs> so everything old is new again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You have to watch it. You have to watch it. You have to check it out. I will. I'll I will. I will look at that. I Yeah. Yeah. So what else is going on? What else have you been looking at or what else have you been seeing that you've been like, oh my goodness, this is like getting under my craw? Um, where's my notes? <laughs> so silly. <laughs> God, I lost my train of thought. There was something that I wanted to address about the Oscars that I noticed and I was like, oh, so... To explain to me, back to the Oscars, because maybe you'll know the answer to this. What was the point of Eminem coming out? Oh, my God. Let's mean? talk about that. I don't know. That was, but, ugh. I think that was stupid. I feel like, okay, can we talk about this? I don't like there not being a host at the Oscars. Last year, yeah. I thought it was good. I thought it was good last year because it was, like, fresh and new and something different. But can I tell you? Kevin Hart ruined it for the world. All he had well, to do was apologize. All he had to do was apologize. You know what? I'm a non-PC person. And I think people evolve. And I just really oh. hate the fact that you crack a joke 10 years ago. You have a new perspective on life. and to, Your best friend could be gay in 10 years. You could have had a gay affair or three in 10 years. Like you just can't take to heart when someone says not heart. <laughs> <laughs> but not bunch. When someone says ten years ago. <laughs> and I just think the gay people are the biggest, biggest offenders of this because if you ever are around any group of gay people, they bash everything and everyone. <laughs> it's just a given. Then when you say one disparaging thing about some sissy, they are heartbroken, they can't breathe. What do you mean? Oh, my God, that's awful. I'm like, sissy, you could take a dick in the ass, take a joke. <laughs> Stop the bullshit. <laughs> and it, I, it, I'm more, it, it, it makes me scream. Like whenever they get, and he said this, and I'm oh, shot. What do you say? What kind of, what kind of shit do you say on a regular? No, I, I understand. Like but my thing this is, all he had to do is ruining America. All he had <laughs> to ruining. do, 
All he had to do was say, I'm sorry, and we could have moved on. Because, again, I don't think he needed to apologize. Okay, he'll fact- say, I'm sorry now. What will they ask him to do the next time and the next yeah, time? Yeah, but guess like, what? That's the world that we live in now. It's like, you know what? I'd love to Ugh. carry my moisturizer onto the plane. But thanks to Al-Qaeda, since 2001, <laughs> I can't do it. This is the world we live okay. in. I want to host the Oscars. So, oh, honey, okay. You, you should have saw the shows I used to do on airplanes before 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> Would not dream of doing any of that today. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we talk about how sucky flying is now? Because I can fly. Thank goodness for the last, um, I want to say three weeks. For the last three weeks, I've actually been here in Las Vegas, but for most of last year, I was like on a plane for like like twice a week, and I miss flying. Wow. Like I remember being like a kid, like and because like, we I grew up in Chicago, and like my mother's family lived in. St. Being Louis. excited to fly and dressing up. Yeah, and going, you basically I drove just, up to I the was, plane. I never kind of just like the whole process of doing all that stuff. Like I want to roll up on my plane, like I roll up to the train. To go to, like, I want to go, get up on it, and get moving. Like, that whole process of, of going all those hours early and the shoes and the shows, it's so annoying. No, totally. Like and it's, it's like, now it sucks. It's, it's like, like if worse someone it's... really wanted to do damage to this play, they would learn how to make something with spit. You take my water. <laughs> take my hello. <laughs> take my salad dressing that I make myself as tapping to me many times. Take it all. But if I wanted to blow this bitch up, I would make that device and I would sit there and spit in it and it would go kaboom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Yeah, but. no, it's it's awful. And I just as you say, it's the world we live in. It's the world we live and in. What and, do that's, we do? and that's my thing about the Kevin Hart. It's like, you know what, it's the world we live in. Everyone's very sensitive. Everyone you know, is like you have to. Well, maybe that feeling. was a lesson that he learned, and he had to step away from it. But thanks so. to him, now we have a hostless Oscars. <laughs> so thank maybe you. If the, maybe if the ratings weren't good this year, and there's a lot of backlash, they'll get out. I think like those girls were auditioning to be the host. Honestly, nope. And maybe need, they'll we call. Need, we need Tina maybe Fan they'll, and Amy Pullen. Maybe Tina they'll <laughs> call Chris Rock and Steve Martin because that. Sound like a little slight audition too. No, it did feel like a little bit of an audition, but they're a weird pair. I th- I enjoyed them together, but they are a really weird pair. You they have they they have very polarized senses of, of comedy, but it's kind of the same ish because it's, it's generational. This but Chris true. Rock just kills me all the time. Not for nothing though. I don't know who does his grooming. His mustache was a little. Fagakta. You gotta admit, his mustache is like really is a little weird. I don't know. Watch it again. Go look at the clips. His mustache was a little weird. That's how I'm gonna leave this because we actually have oh, to wrap up. Wait, what was I saying? We're done already. Oh my god, this we're was done so much fun. It went, oh my, it went so fast. It did it, so much we didn't cover. <laughs> I know. You have to have to have to call in again. I love you so much, and you're so much fun. Oh, thank you so for glad. having me. <laughs> thank you for coming. This was fun. <laughs> Indeed, and thank you all for listening today. We had my good buddy, HRH. And Frosty, if you're and listening, Frosty, invite me to your show. I'm going to work on Frosty. We are going to oh, listen. Oh, sorry. Miss Ross? Miss Ross. <laughs> we're going to get her from the win, and we're going to get her here at Hot 702.5 FM, and we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm I'm personally going to broker some kind of a, um, a, uh, a, uh, a truce here at the station. Well, she's but, <laughs> fighting with her. She's fighting with me. Well, we're, we're going to work it out, but thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for listening. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. You're listening to Showtime uh, with Jordan Van Hazel and friends. We'll hear you. We'll see you next Monday at five o'clock here on Hot 702.5 FM. Thanks so much. Have a good